a risk of running into serious problems. Cool. Right, we've got a small group on tonight, and I thought I would continue, not really tech as much as what we had been talking about on Sunday before we got rudely interrupted. Um, and that is weight management and you know, losing weight, gaining weight. Um, I wouldn't recommend the Corona diet. It's not that pleasant. Uh, quite effective, but not that pleasant. So yeah, don't go there just, just yet. <laughs> um, but there are numerous ways. If you look at statistics these days, Obesity is a, pardon the pun, massive problem. And all the talks that you see international um, saying uh, you've got to do this diet, you've got to watch that, and you've got to do that, and you've got to do the next thing is wonderful, but people are continuing to put on weight. Now, the question is, why? Is it purely diet related or are there other reasons? And interestingly enough, there are, I'm starting to pick up a lot more research on it. There is a lot of um, issues where people are putting on weight from things that we are using. Now, I'm obviously preaching to the converted over here, but in general, and this would be more for your prospects and so maybe some of your team members, people are putting on weight from things that they're using on a daily basis. Their cleaning products, their cosmetic products, their shampoos, their soaps. All of those things, commercial brands, not ours, contain different chemicals. You look at uh, box of laundry powder, for instance, and it's got some really big words on it. Ours has got some really big words on it too. And I did a, a bit of research the one day and I did a Google search on every single one of the ingredients that they put on the packet. And they're all quite safe. So from, from that perspective, our laundry powder is, as we all know, perfectly safe, partly because it's not full of fillers um, as we know, we use a very small scoop, but most laundry powders use nearly a cup. And 95% of that cup is made up of fillers and other bits and pieces. And those fillers and things contain phthalates. It's a big fancy term. Um, we won't go into the spelling of it, but they are phthalates, which are essentially hormone interrupters. And that is what is leading, one of the causes leading to people putting on weight because it's messing up the hormones and causing problems. You, people who eat a lot of processed meats, and I must say, us South Africans, I think personally, um, are pretty fortunate in that most of our meat is free range because it is, comes from farms and it is not in the feedlots like they've got overseas where you've got 100 cattle in a space that's big enough to hold 10 and these things are being forced to eat all sorts of junk um, including gro growth hormones and all the rest. Uh, a lot of chickens are getting growth hormones and things in it. So our food is causing problems with our hormones. And this is one of the things that's leading to this extreme weight gain um, with obviously all the other <coughs> sorry, um, knock-ons <laughs> <Put a mask. laughs> um, that come with those issues. So, you know, if your hormones are getting messed about or you're ingesting artificial hormones or synthetic hormones, that is gonna cause problems. And obviously the weight gain or weight loss is, as I've said on Sunday, it's simple, but not easy. 
um, metabolism plays a big role. So people who are active are going to have a fast metabolism and they're going to burn off the excess calories pretty quickly. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, are forced to sit in an office all day, sitting behind a laptop or a computer, and they get in in the morning, they sit down, and they don't move. And they probably, when they get bored, they snack, and they're snacking on refined carbohydrates. Um, whenever you listen to weight loss talks, they'll always talk about carbs. Now, there's a difference between a refined carbohydrate, which you'll find in things like white rice and white bread and white sugar and all those processed things, and unrefined carbohydrates, which is what you find in nature. Because an unrefined carbohydrate will have your carbs, which your brain needs, because your brain is glucose hungry. It's a, let's say it's a glucose glutton. So sugar is our fuel. Sugar comes from carbohydrates. But again, nature has balance. So it's got, the, it's got the glucose or the sucrose or the fructose or the lactose, but it also has vitamins, minerals, and fiber to balance out all those other things. So um, a refined carbohydrate has had all of that stripped away and all you've got left is the carbohydrates or the sugar, which is bad. An unrefined carbohydrate has got all the trace elements, which is good. So when you're looking at snacks, when you're looking at cleaning materials, because now you take a traditional office, there's somebody there that's spraying probably something like Mr. Min, they're spraying right now, they're spraying heavy alcohol loads all over the place. They're spraying all sorts of different cleaners, which are loaded with chemicals, a lot of which are hormone interrupters. And you are sitting in an air-conditioned office inhaling those fumes. You have put on, you've gone to the local supermarket and you've, because it's hot, you've got some anti-stink. Read the label, read the ingredients. Most antiperspirants have got aluminum in them. The skin under your arm, very, very sensitive. That aluminum goes through, crosses the blood brain barrier and leads to things like Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's really started developing when aluminum cookware came in because that metal leaches out, goes into your food and causes problems. I'm under correction, but as far as I'm aware, um, aluminum is mined, or if you're in the States, it's called al aluminum. Aluminum is mined in Australia, but they refuse point blank to allow it to be processed because of the high toxicity of it. So where do they send it to? They ship it out to South Africa to Richards Bay, which has got some of the biggest aluminum smelters in the world. They process it there, they're not worried about the locals, and then they ship out the ingots back to Australia or export them around the world to be used in soda drink cans. Soda sits in there, it leaches out, you're drinking it, hormone interrupters, all sorts of other problems. And with today's society, we're a fast food society. Um, the States, I think, is probably worse than what we are over here. But that is where the problem is coming from. John Miller has a very subtle way of putting it when he talks about processed food. And he, th and he talks about chicken nuggets. And you might have to be American to understand it. But he says, where in the chicken do you find nuggets? <laughs> so that is essentially what we're eating. Um, and most of those chickens are battery chickens, which are fed on hormones and antibiotics. They never see sunlight. And they fed this processed food. Even things like some of the commercial salmon oil brands and salmon. It's not wild-caught salmon. 
you will find some of the boxes will tell you that this is wild caught fish. I would always go for that because you know that that is a, a much healthier fish than a farmed fish like the salmon because they feed them so much junk that those fish are toxic. If you go and catch fish in Durban Harbour or Cape Town Harbour, you are basically going to be poisoning yourself. Those are two local harbours that I'm aware of. There's a lot of places um, in the States as well where they will tell you when you get a fishing license, you may not eat the fish that you catch in, cer in a certain distance around a river mouth because of the, all the toxins that are going out of there, which the fish are ingesting, which you then ingest. So things like shampoos, obviously our shampoo is specifically formulated and it's got things in there that are natural and um, I hesitate to say food-based, but non-toxic. There are no toxic ingredients in there and they check everything. Whereas a lot of the commercial brands have got things in there that are toxic and or again, hormone interrupters, which lead to weight gain. And with that weight gain, it leads to hormone-related cancers, which is mostly breast cancer, more common in women, obviously, than men, but men can also get breast cancer, and prostate cancer. Women are safe from that one. But those are hormone-related <laughs> cancers that you have to be careful of, caused by these things that we are washing our clothes in, Wearing the clothes, it's hot, you perspire, go straight through the skin because that's how these things enter. I know Cez is busy with some research on the phthalates and the hormone interrupters at the moment. And I'm quite interested to see what her end results are as, as a result of that. And I think she's part of the reason why we ran out of G1 laundry powder a little while back because she does such a good job at marketing it. And she tells such scary stories that Everybody just buys. Um, so we did have a bit of a challenge with the G1 laundry at one stage. But it's these are the things we need to be educating our prospects about and our downlines who are not 100% product users. As I said, on this particular call, I think we are all 100% product users. So I'm really preaching to the converted. But this talk is being recorded and we can push it out, share it. I don't mind. Um, I want to, I'm hoping this is going to work. I've got a little thing that I want to share over here. Um, and it's, there we go. This, this came out of one of the news you can use. I hope everybody can see my screen over there. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. This is the Ashwell shape chart. And one shouldn't really watch the scale too much. This is, there's, they say that there's four basic um, shapes that one needs to look at that um, are problems. And the, this, uh, as I say, this is a news you can use uh, NYCU 0318. So the 2018 um, publication uh, that came out and it is available in the back office because this is where I downloaded this PDF from. Um, so those are the four different shapes. And according to this, your chili shape, which is long and skinny, take care. The pear shape, you're okay. The pineapple shape, under 18, take action. Over 18, be aware. The apple shape, you're in trouble, take action. And it goes according to your height and your waist. So don't worry too much about BMI because as they say, a fit, highly muscular person may have a high BMI, but he's not overweight. So your bodybuilders, your athletes, these really big guys, they technically, according to, this, to the calculations, have a very high BMI, but they're not overweight because the muscle is denser than fat. 
So what they're saying is you want to take a waist measurement and you want to take your height and then check out this chart to see where you are. And once you figure out where you are, if you are in the sort of beigey, greenish range over here, you're okay. If you're in any of the others, be aware and start to watch what it is that you're eating, watch what it is that you're using. Because we have so many things in our environment. Um, you go to the shops and you walk down the cleaning aisle, um, possibly to be looking for prospects to educate, but you might be looking for something else as well. I know for me personally, I've got to be very careful walking down the cleaning aisle because most of the, the fumes take my breath away. Um, even though I don't really have a chest problem, I find I sometimes sort of have to battle to breathe and I move out of there very, very quickly. Now, those things are happening in our homes. People are using those things and they're cleaning their floors, they're cleaning their bars, they're cleaning their tiles with these toxins. And specifically, young mothers with babies are crawling on those surfaces. Can you imagine what is happening? That child is getting such a toxic overload and such a hormonal overload that it stands a pretty good chance of growing into an obese adult. And if you've ever been to a primary school sports match, it is scary. Yes, you have your skinny kids, but there are a huge number of kids that are grossly overweight. I see it at work as well. Um, sometimes these kids have a lack of vitamin D in their system and the skeleton is basically too weak for their weight. And I've seen, look, I'm not exactly grossly overweight myself, or anywhere close to that. I'm actually slightly underweight. Um, but I have seen kids of seven or eight years of age that weigh more than I do. And that mm. scares the living daylights out of me. And what makes it even worse is they'll go into theater for quite a nasty procedure to straighten their legs. It's quite, I wouldn't say dramatic, but it's uncomfortable and orthopedic surgery is painful if anybody's ever had it and they essentially they break the leg straighten it put pins and plates in there and put them in a cast for six weeks and most times they'll do both legs at the same time um, and after that they come out and we go into braces but the part that drives me insane is that you'll see these kids they're six or seven they go into theater they come out and when they wake up Next to their bed is a bucket of KFC. Mm. And this child is eating the majority of the bucket themselves. And I have to quite often restrain myself very carefully from beating up the parents because I hold them responsible. And uh, make some subtle remarks that please see a dietitian as fast as possible and then get my dietitian to have a little chat to them at the same time um, because I've got her educated. But this is the sort of thing that's happening. And people will, you know, I see them along the road. You've got these obese people in tracksuits and they trying desperately to exercise and run. Whoops, I lost my picture. Um, they're trying desperately to exercise and run in the hopes that they're going to be losing weight, but then they're not looking at their diet and they think that maybe one meal a day is okay, but it's a massive, great big plate, or they think they're having, we're having a balanced meal tonight. We're having a bit of salad and we're having this and we're okay. But during the day, they're drinking their sodas and they're drinking their coffee, maybe they're smoking, they're sitting behind a desk, or if you look at some of our traffic officers, they're sitting in a car all day, and they 
are eating highly processed carbs and junk food. So they think that I'm going to go for a run or I'm going to go to gym this afternoon and that's okay. But they forget that it's a lifestyle change. Just going to gym, just going for a run, just going for a walk is good, but it is only a very, very small part of what they need to do to focus on losing and managing that weight. And it's up to us to educate them and say, listen, did you know that your laundry powder is making you fat? And I go, what? Did you know that your shampoo is making you fat? And they look at you as if you are crazy because it's, they don't even think about it. And it's not just the junk food, but it's these other things. It's the chemicals. It's our environment. You sit in front of a laptop, you sit in front of a computer, you're sitting under an ultraviolet, uh, or I shouldn't say ultraviolet light, but a um, neon light, there's air conditioning. Every single one of those things is pushing out heavy toxins. That is causing problems with our entire system, which is why it is so vital for us to take supplements. Yes. Most doctors will tell you, most dietitians will tell you, you don't need to supplement because you're getting it all from a balanced diet. Which in theory is correct. I was listening to a talk the other night by some doctors and they say, yeah, we're we pushing the, the, the vitamin supplements for people who are on COVID. But as soon as they start recovering, we tell them they can stop the vitamins. And I'm going, why are you doing that? Because oh, you don't need them. You're getting everything from a balanced diet, which is true, but 98% of the world population is not getting that balanced diet. So they need to supplement. They, the diet and the foods that we're eating is not sufficient to be able to remove the toxins from our system. So we need to supplement with things like beta God, do the detox to assist the body, give it the tools to help to get rid of all those heavy metals and toxins out of the system. Uh, Arthur first dedicated his life to seeing the results of heavy metals. And in fact, he was credited with uh, testing on earthworms to see how heavy metals work, not, not rats or any other sort of animals. So he decided to use earthworms, which worked really well. Um, and it was, again, it was a world first. Um, so to summarize everything, because I'm running out of time quite rapidly over here. When you're dealing with people, and specifically if they're a bit overweight, and they come to you and they say, what have you got for me to lose weight? You say, may we sit down and have a look at your lifestyle, your diet, and your environment? because it could very well be your environment and the products and things that you're using that are causing the weight gain more than just the food. Yes, the wrong food plays a massive role, but that in conjunction with sitting down all day, not doing anything, taking the lift instead of the stairs, parking as close to the entrance of the shopping center and getting in and getting out as fast as possible. No, park far away. I have a fight with my family on a regular basis on that, or should I say my family fight with me on a regular basis, because I find the furthest parking bay and we walk, because that's an exercise. <laughs> um, if at all possible, I will take stairs instead of the lift. And except when my legs are still heavy from COVID, then I take the lift, but that is getting, pure and far between. But it's all of those little things that we need to be aware of and educate, because that is what we're doing. We are educating people in lifestyle changes. And this is where we're going to be doing these health talks that I did the other day. I want to do quite a few more of those and maybe change them a few in a few little ways 
to bring this sort of information in as well, to make people aware. If you're doing a presentation, make them aware. Why are we using the Super 10? Why are we using the LDC? Why are we using G1? To save money, but also the importance. You don't have to worry about the fancy bits and pieces inside there, what's in there. More important is what's not in there. And if anybody wants to check on the ingredients, go for it. Because you take the individual ingredients, you do a Google search for it, and you'll see most of those things come up in the EWG. And some of them will have warnings that say it could be toxic, but there's no proof behind it. But I have implicit trust in our SAB members that they've done the testing, that they've done the research, that the, the ingredients that they're using are 100% non-toxic and safe. You've all heard about the artificial stomach that they use for our supplements. Did you know that they also have an artificial ecosystem that they test the cleaning products on? And if anybody's ever been to Cape Town to the um, Two Oceans um, aquarium over there, you will find that they've got an artificial ecosystem in that aquarium where they show various different things to it, which is quite fascinating. Now, Neolife have developed their own artificial ecosystem in the States, and they test all of our products to see how quickly it breaks down to the raw ingredients. They take that one step further. Most places I'm sure don't even test for toxicity, never mind anything else. So that's me to wrap up. Um, we've got about two minutes if anybody's got any quick questions, but educate, educate yourselves, educate your customers, educate your downlines. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. I actually had someone approach me just today to ask about the weight management program. Excellent. Um, she had a baby, and since she's had the baby, she just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is an eye-opener for me. It really is. And thank you for all that information. It's really going to help me. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. My pleasure. All right, um, so we've got about a minute left. We'll wrap up now, I think. And don't forget tomorrow evening with uh, Neil Life doing the presentation on all the incentives. We need to work towards those incentives. Encourage the team. Um, I was very encouraged just now when I went online to go and do this download of the, this um, PDF that I put up. And I was quite pleased to see that my PV jumped about 700 points since yesterday when I checked. So people have been ordering vitamin C by the looks of things. <laughs> All right, so we've got less than a minute. Um, I'm going to stop recording.